We have a lot of people that have been anticipating you coming back. For those of you that that haven't seen Dr. Zhu yet, he's qu- getting to be quite a celebrity. He's not just a, a doctor, but he's also a trained chef. So there's going to be lots of opportunities for questions here about plant-based eating. Well, thank and, you for having me. Yeah. So um, today, why don't you tell us what you're going to be showing us how to make today? So today um, I'm going to be making uh, a black lentil uh, tomato stew. Um, it's a very uh, rich and hearty dish. Um, it's perfect for, you know, the weather. I don't know where everyone is, uh, you know, watching from uh, the, across the United States, but, you know, we're coming out of winter um, and, you know, weather has been fluctuating. I know when I see my patients from different parts of the country, uh, they always uh, are concerned about weather f- uh, fluctuations. And, um, you know, this is a great hearty dish. Um, you know, black lentils, there's so many things that we can talk about um, later about it. Um, very hearty dish. Um, it, uh, for me, I'm a big fan of like soups and stews and gumbos and anything that's like a one pot. Um, so that's what I'm going to bring for you guys uh, today. So uh, I'm pretty excited. That's great. I just love one pot meals. I love I'd love anything to do with beans and lentils because I like to try and get those in every day. I think they're just so important and they're so satisfying and and filling. So this way you don't have to worry about, especially people with diabetes, you don't have to worry about that. It's just a really great food. I'm glad that you suggested it. Now, some of you guys are fans and we did originally schedule a different recipe. So don't, don't get sidetracked here. We had a last minute change and I, I'm excited because this last minute change is a recipe that Dr. Zhu, I think, may have recent, recently developed. And I don't even know if he wrote it down yet. So this is <laughs> this won't be a repeat of something that you might have seen him do before. So I'm really excited. No, no, that. no, no. I, what was uh, what was the first recipe that I did on the I think on it was your- stuffed peppers? No, 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 no. The um, oh, the one that you did with me, like what was it a year like, ago? Yeah, like a year ago. Do oh, you I have to, I'm going to have to remember that one. I think that it was, was maybe maybe it was like a cauli. I, I do cauliflower ceviche a lot. Uh, that's uh-huh. always a popular one. No, I don't one. think it was that. It was not that yeah, one. Okay, no. I'll have I'll have to look back and see. But because <laughs> you're doing black lentils, I wanted to get every because people love this part of my show, and I want to get everybody started. So we're going to start with our game. It's time for True or False on Be Green with Amy Live. Answer true or false to Amy's questions in the comments below, and Amy will ask our guest for the expert answer. Okay, so you're going to be starting your recipe soon, but you did say that there were going to be lentils in it. So I wanted to talk about the lentils that you're using today, and those are black lentils. And so true or false, black lentils are also known as beluga lentils after the beluga caviar as they look so similar. What do you say, Dr. Zhu? Oh, we're not going to let people <laughs> say true or false. There's, there's, not a, there's not a prize or anything, so. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, anyway. okay. We're working on that. Um, so, yes, black, black, um, black lentils are also known as uh, beluga, um, you know, black beluga lentils, and uh, because they, they look very, very close to, like, caviar. It's often paired with... Um, you know, for the I know most of you guys um, on the audience um, are plant eaters, but for those that eat seafood, uh, they're usually paired with salmon because it looks really, really close to it. Um, you know, it's really hearty, and uh, yes, so yeah, um, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool because maybe you could trick somebody that that wasn't plant based. Yeah, I, I would like to. to say, like I would it. like. I like to say positively. You know, imitate. I don't. I don't want to trick no one. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good chef chef thing to remember. Positively imitate. <laughs> okay, so you want to get started with your recipe? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Um, so basically, um, it's a. Uh, a black lentil tomato stew. Uh, again, it's great for, you know, the weather changes. Um, it's great for, you know, the different types of, you know, colds, um, you know, just something hearty, um, something that's nourishing. What's great about one pot, you know, ideas is that everything is encapsulated and everything is within the pot. So the nutrition, everything is there. Um, when you're, for example, um, 
you know, frying or roasting, uh, a lot of things could be left behind. So I'm a big fan of, you know, one pot ideas, you know, a slow cooker, um, you know, anything like that, that could retain everything. And, um, you know, this one's really fun to do. Um, it doesn't take long. Hopefully we can finish it um, in um, basically the session. Um, so these are black lentils. If you want to uh, switch to yes. the the cutting board now let's uh, talk about what what you because you have them in a colander and tell because not everybody's familiar with cooking beans and lentils some, for some people this is kind of a new kind of food so why <laughs> do you tell them why do you have it in a colander so um basically lentils so beans and uh, and legumes so legumes are basically the edible you know um edible seeds that are in um, a pod per se that comes from a non-woody plant. And, um, you know, it could be like uh, lentils, beans, it could be like, you know, peas, um, you know, that are, that are edible. Um, sometimes you, you know, we are removing the seeds. Sometimes you could eat the, you know, the whole thing. Like, um, but, you know, for, for these guys, you know, you may be more familiar with like yellow lentils. You may be familiar with like, you know, French uh, green lentils. Um, there's uh, red lentils, right? Um, and they have different types of uh, cooking times. Um, it's different from beans where you don't have to soak them which is uh, an interesting, you know, fact. And um, they cook, you know, relatively faster. Um, and, uh, you know, they're a lot smaller, you know, so, you know, they can, you know, their surface area, um, you know, they can cook, you know, a lot, you know, a lot quicker. So, um, and they're super nutritious. Uh, they're really high in fiber, really high in, um, you know, uh, vitamins and minerals. Um, you know, lentils themselves are, you know, high in like thiamine uh folate phosphorus iron okay and uh, manganese um so it's really really good um and the fiber content you know i can't i can't really uh, emphasize more um you know 97 percent of americans they don't have the daily requirements of fiber um so that means only three percent of us do um and uh you know most americans eat like you know around like 15 and the more relatively recent uh, recommended daily allowance of fiber is um, at least 28 grams per day. And a lot of plant-based experts would also advocate going into the 30s and 40s. So it's a lot of fiber, right? Fiber is only uh, in plant food. It's, it's zero in animal food. And it does so much. Um, it, fiber is basically the food for our good gut bacteria. And, um, and it produces something called... Uh, postbiotics. So fiber is prebiotics, right? Which is food for the good bacteria, which is probiotics. Um, so, you know, it's super, super, you know, uh, you know, yummy and good, and we get in all kinds of forms. So what we're going to start off first is we're going to start off with a, a red onion. Okay. Um, and we want to head and tail them, uh, which is culinary slang for just cutting off um, the tops. Um, and the tails and we don't want to go too too deep because then it will just unravel itself um i like uh this particular onion um because of the color there's a lot of great phyto uh nutrients um in them um you have uh basically manganese in them you have vitamin b6 in them you have vitamin c in them um and I think, Amy, you probably had a question off. Yes, I do. I have another true or false question for everyone and get ready. So we have a true or false question about onions. And that is, and it also talks about garlic, onions and garlic, because they're kind of in the same family, help to lower blood pressure, reduce cholesterol and blood glucose. So type in your answer, true or false. And what do you say to that, Dr. Zhu? <laughs> I would say, um, I would say, uh, you know, yes, in regards that, you know, the, there's a lot of, um, you know, it has antibacterial properties to it, it reduces, you know, your risk of cancer, they found um, digestive health, like we said, we talked about, you know, prebiotics, um, onions contain something called uh, fructo um, oligosaccharides, uh, which act as, you know, prebiotics. Um, they also are really good with bone health um, in terms of preventing, you know, osteoporosis. Um, and uh, they also have a, a particular antioxidant um, called quercetin. 
uh, which you know helps uh, fight uh, inflammation and uh, boosts our immune system. So super, super, super uh, healthy. So what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, medium dice them. Um, I'm loving that that knife. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I use a uh, a cleaver. Uh, that's mm -hmm. my. That's usually my uh, knife of choice. Uh, and so, when you hold the knife or a cleaver, because you're a trained chef, you you would hold it with your thumb there, right? Um, you hold it. So I'm right hand dominant. Um, uh -huh. so, you know, you kind of hold it similarly how you would hold a French or chef knife. Right. Um, so I hold it, I hold, um, you know, my three fingers are on the spine of it. And then my index finger, you know, goes on and thumb wraps around it. So you hold it similarly to, you know, a, a, a chef knife similarly. So it's the same thing. So this, this hold has the most stability um, in terms of, um, you know, the um, grippage. Um, don't know if that's an actual word, but it is now, um, you know, just the stability um, of it. So you could, you know, slice, dice, you know, and have an equal proportion of weight. Um, a lot of people, people, you know, hold it like this. People sometimes hold it like this. And um, it's always problematic because um, um, it doesn't really provide a good, distribution of weight. Um, so I was trained to kind of, you know, hold it like that. And uh, the Chinese, uh, we use uh, cleavers a lot um, because, you know, we eat, we're, 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 we're in love with vegetables, but we also eat, um, you know, a lot of, you know, seafood and um, animal fare as well. Um, and it helps us to cut through like bone and stuff like that. So that's why the, right. the purpose of it. Um, but I like using it because, um, it's a nice feel um, and good weight for myself, um, even with cutting just vegetables. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do, um, so this serving size is going to be like four to six. Um, and uh, it's going to be for, you know, a good family. Um, so this could easily be um, enough uh, for a family of four or six. Um, so we're going to do what we're going to do is uh, we're going to split it in half, cut it in half, take off the top layer. OK, you don't necessarily need to buy this organic. Um, you could uh, because we're removing the outer layers um, and onions kind of like garlic and shallots um, are part of the bulb vegetable family. Um, so they kind of go in one classification. Um, and, you know, onions uh, are in pretty much almost every culture. Um, they kind of form the basis of soups, stews, dishes, things like that. Uh, and they're super, super important um, for just building flavor um, and building, uh, building the actual uh, foundation of the dish. Yeah, it's so amazing when you think about how people in the old days of, of hunting and gathering and all that, how they figured out how to eat mm -hmm. these things. And, and even today, we're still eating them. Yeah, for sure. Um, so like in soups and stews, you know, the French uh, basis is, you know, something called a mirepoix, uh, which is, you know, basically onions, carrots, celeries. Um, which is, you know, kind of the foundation of, um, you know, a lot of stock and soups. Uh, I'm going to use this two onions um, to start with uh, the basis of, of everything. Wow, you really do a great job topping those up. That is so impressive. Ah, uh, it's just practice. Yeah, and two onions and you're not crying. Wow. <laughs> no, I actually don't cry. I actually don't cry with onions. So so it looks like this. Oh, okay. see that? Okay. Look at that. We're, 
going to be looking at the rainbow. That's wonderful. So we're going to be going over to the stove. Uh, and uh, we're going to turn this on like uh, if you want to switch over. Yep, we're on. We're watching you put the onions in the pot. And for those of you that aren't familiar with this way of cooking, if you notice, there's nothing else in the pot except for the onions, right, Dr. Z? Right, right. Um, I did not put oil um, in this. Um, I'm going to turn on the fan a little bit. Can you see it okay? Yes. It's okay. beautiful. So, yeah, I'm going to – so basically um, what we're going to do is uh, – so we're going to sweat – um, we're going to sweat the onions a little bit. So I turned it on to medium, medium to high heat. Um, and you're going to start to hear like a little sizzle. Okay. And you know, what we're going to do is sweat them out. And what that means is that onions already carry their own, uh, water content. And when you start breaking it down and, uh, cook it, it's going to leak, leak, leak the liquid out. Um, and so that would also provide, you know, moisture and uh, I'm trying to find the lid to this. Oh, here we go. All right. So you don't even need to use a nonstick pot. Not necessarily. Um, so, you know, for those, if you find it easier to use a nonstick pot, you can. Um, if you're not doing nonstick, um, you know, I highly recommend to stir it frequently. Okay. That's what I would do. And what, we're, what you're trying to aim for uh, is to cook it to the point where it becomes translucent. Okay. And it may stick and that's okay. Um, because it's a stew, we're going to, you know, we're going to remove. Um, so we're going to sweat it uh, a lid over it. We'll come back over here. So we're going to um, some, mince some uh, garlic next. Right. You know, I love garlic. I use garlic and uh, I use garlic and ginger in almost everything. When you, when you cook with ginger, you're not doing that today, but when you do cook with ginger, people are asking, do you peel the ginger or do you just cut it up i um i cut the edges um where where it's rougher um i cut the edges where it's rougher um if you don't store it properly sometimes it may get moldy um so i just remove those um and uh i don't remove the skin i don't i don't remove the skin either and i yeah i don't remove the when skin. i first became plant-based i was taking the skin off of so many things because I thought that's what you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And then I started learning about how you can use the skin and it's not a problem. Wow, look at that, guys. <laughs> so this is, we're gonna be mincing, um, mincing garlic. Uh, we're gonna rough, rough mince it. Okay, we're not gonna, you know, um, do too much of it. When you're mincing it, you know, you're breaking down the surface area. So cook faster. Okay. So what we're doing is that we are sweating the onions, waiting until it's translucent a little bit. Um, so I'm going to turn down the heat to uh, medium. And see, you're not, it's not really sticking very much, but you're mindful so I, I guess when you, as a chef, is you cook with, with a lot of your senses, not just by seeing something. Is that right? Oh, yeah. You, you have to you? cook with all, all your five senses. So I wouldn't turn this on high. I would turn it on, you know, medium heat, depending on the power of your, uh, the power of your stove, um, especially um, a gas, uh, a flame uh, gas uh, stove, because you can control it easier than... Um, you know, easier than, uh, you know, electric. So basically I'm going to scoop up the garlic. Okay. And then uh, throw it in there as well. It's 
so the the there was a reason right there's a method for that you did the onions first and then the garlic Yes, Is that right? uh, because if you throw in the garlic too, too early, um, it will burn. Um, and so, you know, I wanted to sweat the onions first. You see how it's like a little bit translucent now? Yeah. Like the color has gone down. Um, and so you want to sweat it first. Um, you get some of the liquid that comes out of it. And then that will provide, you know, some moisture uh, to cook, to also cook, um, you know, the, the actual... Um, uh, the actual uh, garlic as well, and it won't burn. So I leave this on uh, medium, and then um, we'll come back over here. Um, actually, what we're going to do next is once you sweat it and then you add the minced garlic, we're going to add uh, cumin, coriander, and ground thyme. Okay. So basically, um, cumin, we're going to do two tablespoons. Coriander powder, we're going to do one table, one teaspoon. And then, um, do, 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 where's my time? Time, we're going to do one teaspoon as well. So, so it's just very simple. I mean, you know, cumin, you know. Um, I like getting them in bulk. If you can go to a, um, if you can go to a, uh, you know, uh, you know, a ethnic uh, market, uh, Indian market, Mexican market, um, uh, better in spices. So we're going to do two tablespoons here. I'm just going to eyeball it. And we will have then, the recipe for you guys. We're going to get it to you in the show notes. So it's not there yet because it's a brand new recipe. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we will yeah. get it to you soon. So we're going to do... Uh, so these are good pairings with, um, you know, the lentil and everything like that. Um, and you can always adjust it. You can always add if you wanted to. Okay. Make sure you stir frequently because it's not. I mean, I'm using a nonstick. Um, and I'm turning down the flame a little bit. And so don't worry about whether it is sticking because we're going to add liquid to this. Um, so it's going to, uh, it's going to uh, pick, that, pick that back up, okay? So we're going to cover it, okay? Keep it on medium to low. And then we're going to, we're going to take um, four Roma tomatoes, okay? Um, um, and then we're gonna do a like medium, medium dice. And these will break down. So I'm just, you know, quickly uh, doing, we're gonna do four of these. Now, if somebody didn't have fresh tomatoes, could they use the canned diced? or the, something like that? Um, I advocate getting fresh. Um, it's very easy to get fresh tomatoes. Um, canned, I'm not a big fan of canned um, because what I was taught, you know, in school was that, um, you know, tomato does have like an acidic nature and a lot of cans have, um, you know, BPA. Yes. Um, some of them are non-BPA, you know, uh, which the industry has recognized, you know. Um, but also cans are aluminum as well, right? So the acidic nature, um, they found that can, you know, actually remove that part of it. So you got to be careful. Aluminum is not, you know, an essential, um, you know, mineral uh, for um, our bodies. It could be actually be very harmful. Um, so we got to be very careful. Sometimes tomatoes, especially like pasta sauce and tomato paste are, actually uh, are in glass, which is better, you know? So I just like getting the actual, um, uh, actual fresh, uh, fresh, fresh tomatoes. So we're doing uh, four Roma tomatoes. And you take off the, the part that was attached to the stem? 
Um, I take it off because it kind of looked bad to me, so I just took it off. Okay, but some, but sometimes do you include it in the dish? Yeah, you can. Some people don't like, um, you know, the 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 stem, the stemmy, the, the head of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I include it. It just didn't look right to me, so I just took it out. Right, because there you are. You're using your your eyes when you're cooking because you're looking at how fresh the ingredients look. Yeah, exactly. Super mm -hmm. important. Let's check mm -hmm. back at this stove. Well, look at that. Mmm. That looks yeah. great. And so, and as you can see, there's it almost looks like something sticking to the to the right, which pot. is fine because we're going to uh, we're going to be adding liquid to it. Um, and uh, so we're going to add the tomatoes to it. And the tomatoes already come with its own liquid. Right, because it's at this point, if I didn't have the tomatoes, I might take a little bit of vegetable broth or a little bit of water, just you a could. Big, small amount, you could. tablespoon yeah, you or could. something. If you, if you didn't want to, um, you know, just, you know, because you see this, like you can actually remove it now, see? Because of the water that you added that came with yeah. the tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, um, because when you're adding water, you could do that, right? But that mm -hmm. might dilute the flavor of yes. what you're already cooking. So I'm going to increase the flame a little bit to medium. Um, it might, you know, uh, that might dilute it. So I'm, I'm careful in terms of like how much more I want to do, right? So we're going to let that cook down for a little bit. Um, this is great because... Sometimes you just need to see a professional chef do something, a trained chef, because this way you can learn as far as, you know, these, these cooking methods. It's, it's so helpful. It really is the way you cut and, and the way things look when you're cooking them. Yeah, I would suggest like, you know, Whole Foods, uh, Sur La Table, um, you know, they have cooking classes. Look up just... You know, look up community cooking classes in your area and join a class. You know, um, there's, you know, I think depending on what generation you were born into, you know, I'm a first generation uh, Chinese immigrant. So, um, you know, both of my parents cooked. So I was very familiar in and out of the kitchen. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of cooking is passed on from, you know, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, depending on your family structure that you grew up in. Um, but what I find is that, you know, more and more younger generation, um, you know, don't know how to cook, right? Um, They're not in touch with their kitchen. You're right. Yeah. And, and that's okay because maybe they weren't shown that, right? Um, but there's always ways to kind of, you know, include that. Um, so that's very, very important. Um, next, we're going to add uh, uh, shiitake mushrooms. Okay, so shiitake are more Asian styled, you know, mushrooms. Okay, you could use for this recipe, you could substitute it for uh, portobello um, uh, mushrooms as well. It will actually go uh, pretty well um, with portobello. Um, mushrooms are great because they are, you know, for the plant based kingdom, they um, give you a lot of flavor. Um, MSG is just basically, if you ever, you know, heard of MSG and, you know, tend to avoid it and stuff like that, it's a monosodium glutamate. It's actually a synthetic derivative of glutamic acid, which is naturally found in mushrooms. So mushrooms, um, you know, are, is what provides that umami flavoring, right? That savor, uh, savory flavoring. And uh, shiitakes are like one of my favorites. Uh, we include this in like a lot of noodle dishes, soups, and things like that. Um, this is around five ounces, okay? So you can just pick it up and, you know, it just comes already pre sometimes prepackaged and already sliced. You could do, you could experiment and swap this out for portobello if you can't find shiitake depending on where you're from. And we're just going to add this into um, the stove. Okay, these are already washed. So basically what we added so far is, you know, we, uh, we have two red onions in here. We have four Roma tomatoes. Um, we have uh, coriander, ground coriander, ground, ground thyme, and then cumin. 
Okay. Um, for those of you who turn tuning in, we're going to have the recipe available for you in the show notes after the broadcast. This is a pretty new recipe, so we, we don't yeah, have it all, yeah. all ready for you. So it feels special that you have the premiere of this recipe. Yeah. <laughs> um, I went to a brunch place and, um, you know, and I just uh, fell in love with this dish um, that they were serving. And um, I just pretty much came home and figured out how to kind of recreate it. Um, so, and I just kind of, you know, uh, did some, you know, nuance, different nuances. So, so we're going to cook over here and then we're going to add um, our lentils. Okay. And then we're going to add liquid um, to it. Okay. Okay. We had a question about the lentils, I think. Yes. So Cheryl, Cheryl want to know, do lentils need to be organic for health? Um, you can buy them organic a lot of, so I went to a couple of places. Um, black lentil surprisingly is not that easily uh, found. Um, so we so, um, so I'm going to add, so I added the black lentils that was rinsed um, and washed already. Uh, they haven't been cooked. And then I'm going to add maybe like a few cups. So this really is a one pot meal, guys. I mean, he didn't even cook the lentils yet. So this is fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, how are we doing on time? Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to add maybe, the, you know, pretty much uh, maybe six, six cups of water. Okay. And so we, we threw, that's, a, that's 24 ounces of black lentils, right? Um, so to answer your question, you can buy them organic. Um, so that's, that's fine. A lot of, uh, specialty places, um, are going to, um, have them in organic. Um, so, so we're going to, uh, so that's, you can throw two to three, uh, bay leaves in there and I'm going to start increasing the flame and cooking time. Honestly, it, this is going to take like. 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. Um, and it cooks pretty, pretty fast. You don't want to add too much liquid. You could do a broth, you could do water, right? Um, you don't want to add too, too much liquid um, because then it will become a soup, right? You want it to make it stewy, you know, um, as much as possible. Um, so that's, that's what I did there. That's what and I then, love about lentils is that they have such a cook a faster cooking time than most of the beans. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, you know, after you added the bay leaves, what you're going to do is you're going to bring it up to a boil and then you're going to lower back down the heat. Um, so when it rises to a boil, um, then, then you're going to, it, once it boils, then you lower the heat down back to like a lower simmer. Okay. So we'll constantly check on that. Um, and, uh, let me see what else. Um, so after that, we're going to add other ingredients. Um, and, uh, so for this recipe, it makes more sense once you have it in front of you. So what we're going to add in addition to this is um, a little bit more, um, we're going to uh, enhance the flavor profile a little bit. So, um, I'm going to be adding balsamic vinegar to this. Okay. So you're going to add roughly around like four tablespoons and you can always adjust these seasonings. Um, I'm going to be adding uh, red cooking wine. Okay. Um, don't worry. The alcohol is burned off, you know, when, uh, you know, when you go through the uh, cooking process and it's similar to like sherry vinegar, you know, it adds like a deeper depth of flavor to it. Um, and so that's around like two tablespoons. Okay. And um, you're going to continue simmering, you know, once it comes up to a boil, it'll come back down. Um, and, uh, pretty much come down to like a simmer. So, and so I already actually had another pot, um, that I, you know, made this morning. Um, so just in, re you know, uh, respects with time, just to make sure that we're good with time and I'll show you like the, the finished product. Um, and then once it comes down to a simmer, um, I added, I'm going to add the last part of it, um, uh, dino kale, okay, which is really, really cool and fun, okay. 
Um, a lot of great, great nutrients. Kale is like one of, you know, the most nutritious, uh, you know, you know, quote unquote, I think almost every plant, Plant food is a superfood. I'm not really a big fan of superfood, uh, like the word of it, because it makes it seem like it's very rare and it's very exotic sounding, right? And not many people can get to it. Um, I think a lot of um, you know plants in the plant kingdom are actually superfoods because they're just highly, you know, so dense in terms of nutrients um, and jam packed with them. And um, so for this, what you can do is remove the stem. And this is how we remove the stem uh, when I was in school. I, I used to have a little a little dog. Well, I had her for 16 years. And after I went plant-based, anytime she would hear me cutting things on the cutting board, she would come into the kitchen hoping that something would go flying off since I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a trained chef. The one thing he did like was the stems from the kale. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, kale, um, you know, the, you kind of add these like towards the end, um, towards the end of the cooking process. Let's check over back to the stove. Ooh, look at that. It's really cooking down and you don't see it yeah. as much liquid in there. Yeah, exactly. So you can always add in liquid, right? And mm -hmm. when you when you are boiling them, um, you know, you have the steam and vapors and, uh, you know, that's it's going to continue to evaporate. So you're going to be concentrating flavor and you're going to be, um, you know, cooking it down and um, you're also losing more of the volume, which is what we want because we don't want it to be a stew. We want it to be uh an actual uh we don't want it to be a soup we want it to be a stew so um you throw in you throw in bay leaves um is very very common for you know uh southern types of um you know southern types of uh you know cooking um with gumbos and soups and stews and things like that so yeah i wanted to ask you about the bay leaf because when i grew up if if my a family member was cooking something with a bay leaf after they were finished cooking they would hunt for the bay leaf to take it out yeah, yeah. you don't you don't uh you don't eat with it um it's there it's not a garnish um you cook it uh you cook it it's not um you know it's not a uh <laughs> it's not a garnish so okay so we're gonna do a couple of swapping uh just to kind of so bear with me well we really so, appreciate that you made this ahead of time and that you're making it in front of us so that's that that's very kind of you to do that so that we can okay. see it no and, problem and there's 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 no magic <laughs> there's work yeah, yeah, it, looks yeah, like, yeah. it looks like magic <laughs> it looks like magic exactly Okay, um, let's see. So this is what it looks like after it's cooked down. Wow. Okay. So this is what it's supposed to look like. This is, you know, the close to the finished product. Um, oh, I forget to, to also mention that we're also adding, um, you know, a lot of the, the saltiness um, is going to come from miso. So miso is basically made out of uh, soybean, which is, you know, also, um, you know, uh, derived from edamame, which is the whole soybean. We're going to put like uh, around three tablespoons. Um, there's different kinds of miso if you're not familiar with Japanese cooking. Um, so I put like, you know, around two to three tablespoons and this will enhance um, the, the savory component of it. Um, see. I'll turn down the flame a little bit, um, and we're not adding additional salt. Um, you know, the miso paste comes with, you know, it's pretty much uh, broken down, you know, soybean paste, been fermented. Um, 
and uh, it adds like a depth of flavor, you know, to it. Um, so if, and you then here, it, if you put it in the beginning, it, it would maybe dissipate the flavor. Is that why you waited to the end? Um, no, I didn't wait to the end. Um, Um, I didn't wait to the end. Um, I, 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 I placed it after, um, you know, uh, after it was boiling. Um, so I just put it in there so it can break it down to cook better. Um, and then you just kind of stir, you know, frequently. Um, you don't do it in the beginning. You do it after you uh, actually added the volume, the, the water content um, in there. Okay. Um, so I would add it after it comes up to a boil. And then you add the tablespoons, you know, of it. So for those that, you know, are fighting, um, I guess, higher, you know, blood pressure, you know, you could, you know, be mindful of it. Um, but it's a great way of not adding additional salt. Um, it's the natural sodium content that comes with, um, you know, soybean that's been concentrated and fermented and, you know, broken down like that. So, you know, um, it, it's great, you know, high in, you know, uh, uh, minerals um, as well. So. So let me let's check back. Yeah. So you said that that was made from from soy, and some people can be concerned about soy. So I wanted to put up uh, this question here about soy. It was a true or false that we had, mm -hmm. and that is greater true or false. Greater intake of soy foods is linked to a decrease in the risk of breast cancer, prostate cancer, and cardiovascular disease. So soybeans, um, you know, I'll let people kind of think about that uh, a little bit. Yeah, you guys can type um, true or false. So, you know, when people, uh, let me just kind of stir a little bit as people are thinking about that one. That really looks so good. And so a lot of people are kind of afraid of soy because they hear, they hear that it, they, well, some people are saying that it may not be healthy, that you should avoid it. No. So what it does is that, you know, what they found in terms of breast cancer, estrogen and soy is that, you know, there's two different kinds of receptors. And, um, you know, when when you have an increase in uh, breast cancer, you know, it, it triggers a, you know, one part of the estrogen receptors. Right. And then when you're consuming uh, soy, it's triggering another uh, uh, component of the receptors. And so what it does is that it doesn't upregulate, it actually downregulates. And what that means is that it, ac it actually decreases, you know, the risk, uh, for breast cancer, um, ironically speaking. So, um, it doesn't, you know, I would say, you know, have at it, um, you know, definitely be mindful of, you know, soy can also be processed. So, I, you know, believe it or not, like tofu is actually, you know, processed. Um, yeah. there's a whole, there's a whole process of making tofu. And um, so process just means that it's broken down from its whole form, right? So the whole form is like soybean and amame. Um, you have to be very careful about soybeans in America um, being genetically modified as well as one of the top crops um, in terms of uh, GMO. So you gotta be very, very careful. Look for the organic and GMO uh, free uh, seals. And um, yeah, okay, so we added the miso, right? Um, well, I, I, I put the other pot on the other side. So, you know, we're, we're not, uh, let me see. Okay, so we're focusing on the finished product, right? Uh, we added the miso and what we're gonna do is uh, we're adding, you know, balsamic vinegar. Uh, this is just like a, uh, a Costco brand. It's very, very good actually. And, um, we're also adding a cooking wine. Okay. Uh, this is a little bit mild and sweet. Okay. Uh, red, uh, cooking wine. And, you know, it's not the same thing as adding actual wine. Um, uh, the alcohol is burned off uh, when it's cooked and it adds like a hint of like sweetness and mild sweetness. And, um, you know, it's good for, uh, uh, just like more savory, you know, dishes. Um, it's perfect for, you know, mushroom dishes. Um, if you're trying to make like a good sauce out of it, it's really good as well. So we did that. And then also we're adding a black pepper. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take the dino kale, um, you know, which is here. And then we're going to add it over here. Okay. Just, just layer it in. 
So you didn't even really, a, you didn't cut it up very small at all. And you're just going to no, put it right no, in no. there. That's no, wonderful. No. See, if you guys are trying to eat your greens, this is a wonderful way to. Yeah, I didn't really cut it up. Um, it breaks down pretty quickly. It cooks really quickly. Um, you want to do this towards the end. You don't want to do it towards the beginning. Um, so, yeah. So we're, we're going to bring it down to like a low simmer. Okay. That just looks like it would be just so satisfying and filling. <laughs> Um, do you have any questions so far? I'm just going to wash my hands. No, right I am going to check, uh, Jesse T want to know, does miso have salt in it? So it has sodium. Uh huh. Salt is sodium and chloride. Um, okay. it has sodium in it. So yes, it does. So you got to be careful in terms of like, you know, if you are a hypertensive patient, you know, you could, uh, you know, uh, just be careful of that. But to be honest with you, the, you know, what, what's different about, you know, um, adding, um, you know, foods that naturally everything, all plants actually have naturally occurring, you know, sodium with it. And the difference is, is that the reason why it doesn't spike, um, you know, your blood pressure, your heart rate, you know, uh, dysfunction, your kidneys is because it comes, it's, you have to think about it in how things are wrapped. Right. So we don't eat things based off of macro and micronutrients. They don't come by themselves like that. Right. Um, it's depending on how it's wrapped. So when you're eating a lot of plant based fare, you are eating so much fiber with it that, you know, you're actually going to be decreasing your blood pressure because of, you know, um, the different components with plant based you know, food that naturally you know, dilate the vessels that naturally, you know, bring down, you know, um, inflammation. They're naturally very highly alkaline and not acidic. Um, you know, so there's a lot of components that would actually bring down your blood pressure. So, you know, for me, it's like, you know, if you're super hypertensive, you, you know, you have really bad renal or kidney disease, definitely consult with your primary, you know, no matter what kind of, you know, diet you're following. Um, but when you have naturally occurring sodium in certain foods, um, you know, it's not just, you know, just don't think about just sodium. It also comes like, you know, what I just included in there, there's a lot of other minerals that help balance, you know, everything because your body needs sodium and needs chloride. It needs, um, you know, potassium and needs magnesium to be able to, you know, balance and regulate your cardiovascular system um, to, and then, and, and eventually regulate, you know, your blood pressure. So um, definitely consult with your primary uh, or your cardiovascular uh, um, specialist and, you know, nephrologist. Um, but yeah, you, you want to be, you know, mindful, right? So, and like I said, you can always adjust these seasons. Look at that guys. And that looks so good. Okay. And, uh, so I'm going to turn, away. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this off and put it on the serving plate. There you go. That looks really good. We're good with time, Amy. Oh, we're great. We're okay. great. Um, uh, shall want to know what kind of knife you're using? Uh, you go to an Asian store and you look for a butcher's knife or a cleaver. So it's a, it's really called a cleaver. It's called, it's called a cleaver. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, there's no brand. It's, it's not a brand name. I just went to an Asian store, um, like a Chinese market and, uh, you know, it's common for uh, Asian Asian cuisines to use this kind of knife. So you go to an Asian store and uh, you can just find it um, easily. Just find it, so, all right. So, well, actually, before I do this, we're going to garnish. Last thing is to garnish with um, parsley. I'm just going to rinse it real quick. This is great because you're showing us ways of getting more greens in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because th because they say you should have lots of greens and people just think, oh, I have to have a huge salad or something in order to get these greens, which it is important to have those fresh greens that are not cooked, the raw ones, but it's okay to get some of them in there that are cooked as well. Yeah, exactly. So when you when you cook down the parsley, it's not going to have as much of a the, the flavor kind of 
dissipation. Well, I'm not cooking. I'm not cooking it. You've just um, garnished it. Garden. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. That's why yeah. you're doing it last. Yes, correct. Okay. Are you seeing this? I am seeing this and I'm saying, uh, Laura, please. <laughs> <laughs> so the residual heat, so I turn off the flame and the residual heat, um, the residual heat is going to continue to cook down the kale. Um, Which is even now it's probably pretty tender. Yeah, exactly. So you don't throw it, you don't throw it in, um, you know, you don't throw it in, um, You don't throw it in, um, you know, in the beginning. So. So now you said that black lentils could sometimes be not 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 as easy to to find them in a store. It's not as easy to find. Um, So if somebody couldn't find them, could they put a different kind of lentil instead? Um, it would be different. I would I would search for black lentils um, if you can. You probably would need to go to like a specialty store. Um, so I just, uh, you know, toasted some sourdough bread. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's basically, there you go. Wow. Can you see it? Oh my goodness. Look at that. And that's a really big portion, and you can eat yeah. all that, and it and it's okay. This this is how we eat to get healthy, and if we need to lose weight, we can eat a big portion like that and and still lose weight. Yep, yep, exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, de there's many different ways, and um, you know, I don't be afraid. You know, what I'm saying so, um, but yeah, I'm just actually going to eat this in front of you. Yeah, because you've been cooking. Rachel. You cooked it Rachel. twice now, <laughs> and that and that's what it, that's what a real chef has to do anyway, right? You have to mm -hmm. taste it, and especially since you've been still developing this recipe, so you kind of have to taste mm -hmm. it and say, okay, you know, does it, what is it? Does it need something else, or you know, what do you what do you think? Well, you don't, you don't. I mean, you want to do that before you serve it. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I tasted it. Um, you know, bef before we got on camera. So, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, everything is, um, it's not bad. So does anyone have any questions? This is really good, by the way. <laughs> well, people want to know how they can find you now. <laughs> <laughs> is it, it in the comments? I mean, they, they were, they were talking about, about actually trying to, to find, um, I think Angela said the next person who knocks on Dr. Zoo's door will be moi crashing his food party. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesse T said, and moi looks great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like just, you know, okay. So like, Give you know, you have, so here, so, virtual so, so you have, you know, you got, you got the dino pale, right. You got the, the black lentils, you got the red onions, right. You have, you know, the tomatoes, you know, which um, we didn't talk about it, but it comes with, you know, a lot of lycopene, which is great for prostate health. Um, you have the shiitake mushrooms, you know, um, and then you have, um, you know, we put in uh, balsamic vinegar. We put in, you know, red cooking wine. And uh, yeah, everything is um, I'm actually just going to throw all this together. Um, but yeah. Any questions? Okay, so we have, let's see, we're going to have another question from, okay, Jacob said, I don't care for onions. What can I use in a recipe instead? Well, the question is, why do you not care for onions is the better question. Everyone should care about onions. <laughs> if, uh, if, it's, if it's the crying process, right, you can get someone else to do it. <laughs> uh, for onions, you can wear like, you know, back in the day when we had junior high and high school, we had chemistry lab, right? You can wear those like, you know, lab goggles. Oh, yeah. Um, that's a good uh, idea. That's, yeah, you could do that. Um, but onions are, man, they're just so, so fundamental to like pretty much so many different kinds of cooking um, from every culture, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so, yeah, it's, um, I would, I mean, I would say the, what's his name again? I would tell him to just come over, taste this, and then hopefully that would change. Yeah. 
get, hopefully there's some left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions before I devour all this? All right. Yeah, because I think I'm going to be making it soon. Uh, Rebecca want to know what should I stock in my refrigerator and pantry for a plant-based kitchen? I mean, that could be another show in itself, but maybe some basics. Um, I apologize food in my mouth. Um, so in your pantry stock up on dry goods. So go to a store, look at if they have a bulk bulk food aisle, stock up on that. Dry foods, um, grains, um, beans, legumes, stock in the pantry, you know. Um, fridge is basically things that are perishable. So anything that is in the produce aisle, you put into the fridge. Label everything. Um, put them in, like, you know, glass containers. Put them in paper towels. Um, try not to put, you know, use it with, like, plastic bags. Um, that would create, you know, a lot of moisture, increase the mold. Um, and things will break down uh, a lot quicker. And, um, you know, just got to be mindful of, you know, what you can set out on your kitchen, you know, counter versus what goes into your actual fridge. And um, anything, anything that's a plant you can put in there. <laughs> I had a, I, I, I interviewed, um, you know, so, you know, if you've never heard of me, I built a platform called The Chef Doc um, in 2017. Um, and it's a wellness, you know, uh, platform. And, um, uh, since I've written a book, I've, uh, host a podcast and on my podcast, I've interviewed a chef where she's also a plant-based chef. And she told me that if you were to eat a new plant for every single meal for three times a day for 365, you would not repeat the same plant. That's how diverse and how large the plant kingdom is. So I don't want to, you know, I, I commonly hear, you know, when people think of, you know, incorporating more plants, it's like, doc, you know, I don't want to just eat a salad. I don't want to just eat rabbit food. And, um, you know, I don't know about you, but this is like, you know, I think this could feed and satiate anyone. Right. So it's just about creativity. It's about, you know, um, learning recipes, start from any level. You don't have to go to school like I did. Um, you know, a lot of great chefs never even went to school. Um, for example, Julia Child, she never, you know, um, um, you know, she started out, you know, cooking on her own first. Um, and, uh, you know, and then she got, you know, professional uh, training. Um, but yeah, I would say, I would say just some um, experiment, you know, the best way to learn is to experiment for yourself, experiment with others, include other people in the kitchen with you. Um, and just try like a new recipe, you know, one new recipe a week. That's not hard to do. And if you do that for every single week, well, guess what? You'll have 52 recipes under your belt and just try a new plant, you know, um, you know, from the plant kingdom. And, you know, basically, um, you know, we have so many great things at our fingertips. You have YouTube, you have books, you have, you know, TV shows, you know, um, you know, there's an endless possibility of what you can do. It's about taking the first step eating more plants and uh yeah you know so be green with amy so <laughs> that's right and i wanted to let everybody know we talked about it a little bit in the beginning but let's talk about it some more now i have had the honor of interviewing almost all the docs from plant-based telehealth and you are also a doc for plant-based telehealth so why don't you talk about that sure sure thanks um, so basically, uh, I've, uh, partnered with plant-based telehealth, um, you know, each of the doc there, um, is, uh, we run our own private practice and we run conjunction and, you know, we run as a team and, uh, basically it's a platform that's virtual. Um, it's all, you know, we're, you know, the, the platform is able to cater to every state, um, including Washington DC. And I think a couple of, uh, us territories. Um, and then we also do, um, we also do uh, international consulting um, as well. And basically we're seen as, you know, we would call it lifestyle medicine consulting, okay? We work alongside your primary care doc. A lot of people try to seek us as their main doc. Um, and uh, we do a full, we can spend a half an hour, we can spend a full hour, you know, not the seven minutes uh, that you're used to in your primary care doctors. And um, I focus on, 
you know, your full health history, your medical, your social, your surgical, your dental. Uh, I review your, you know, medications. I review your vitamins and supplements. I review your labs. And, you know, we can adjust all that. I can order, you know, a full lab panel on you. And, um, you know, just really, really a very, very comprehensive, you know, sit down. Um, and we talk about, you know, where has your pain points been with your health and wellness journey? And how can we, you know, improve it? Um, and I operate, um, you know, as an advocate for my patients, um, I cheerlead them on. And um, they're in the driver's seat, you know, and I'm just a humble, you know, a uh, person on the sidelines and, you know, cheering them on and, you know, wishing them well and helping them with many resources as possible. We have so many resources and um, each one of us is licensed in different states. Um, so currently right now I'm licensed in seven different states, uh, California, Texas, Connecticut, New Jersey, Florida, Washington, um, California um, and West Virginia. Um, and I'm going to be adding more states uh, later and um, it's all virtual. So um, so it's very, uh, it's very cool. Um, definitely, uh, you know, seek us, seek one of, uh, one of us and, uh, yeah, let's have a chat. Let's, uh, you know, let's break it down. Now I'll, I'll teach you how to, uh, kind of revamp your kitchen and tell you what to throw out and what to keep and all that stuff. So it's, it'll be good fun. Right. So we, we could even some, a, a patient could have a consult with you and they could, you could actually tour their kitchen with them. And they could open I up could. their cabinets and you could say, take that out and you might want to, you know, add that in. And and here you are, you're, you're a doctor, you're a medical doctor, but yet you could still help them with this lifestyle. Because some people, it seems that they they may adopt this lifestyle and it, and they don't, either they don't feel well or they feel that they're not thriving or they're not losing weight or, or whatever it is that they thought it was going to do for them. And it doesn't seem to be working. But you, I mean, talk about how it's an individualized thing, right? For people. Yeah, yeah. So far, um, you know, we're doing individual consultations and, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, it just depends on where they've been. A lot of them, a lot of patients that come to me either are curious, um, that have already transitioned. Some of them have transitioned for years um, and they just need help with certain nuances. A lot of people come a uh, majority of the times because, you know, their doctor um, doesn't understand or they, you know, their own doctor would, you know, kind of like uh, invalidate them or disregard them or, you know, just really, um, you know, not understand where they're coming from. And, you know, it's not doctor's faults. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, diet, food, nutrition, lifestyle is not taught in schools, at least when I went to school. Um, and it's not emphasized in training. Most of the times, you know, we are taught on how drugs work and how disease manifests and less on how um, prevention, optimizing your wellness um, is really, really, um, you know, uh, emphasize. Right. And so for me, I recognized that really, really early on and felt that I was super ill prepared. And so I just made it a point to get certified in this, went to the culinary school, got my health, health coaching, you know, uh, certification and, um, you know, spent just so many other extra years of doing all these different detours and not everyone, you know, has that time resource or even the passion for it. And, you know, for me, especially like I have a passion for it. that's pretty much all I focus on. And, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, everyone's different. So, um, you know, I see people from like all, all ages and I meet them wherever they're at. And, you know, I teach from a no blame, shame, no judging, no, no finger pointing uh, approach. And I just want people to kind of be well um, and to have a better control of their lives by teaching them this tools and knowledge and resources so they can, you know, take over. I wouldn't want to see them forever. That's not the that's not the point of it, you know, so. Right, because you want you want to heal them, not not make them a subscriber to. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah um, the satisfaction. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, we have a lot of resources. Check out my site. Um, I also produced a uh, a masterclass series. It's a self demand, self paced, uh, 
you know, um, uh, 50 plus hours. Um, so you'll see me interviewing um, other people from like the fitness industry, physic uh, the medical industry, coaching, dietitian, um, and, you know, just a great, uh, great uh, continued uh, self-paced, self-educational uh, program. I have a podcast. I have a book. Um, so, yeah, we have a lot of resources. So and we'll have links just, to all of that in the, in the show notes for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So. Well, thank you so much. I'm so, so honored that you came back because we love to have you here. And it was so kind of you to make that, that dish twice <laughs> so that we could see what it looks like afterwards. And, and you kind of developed that recipe recently. So it was really nice to see that. And it's just so nice to have you. You're so knowledgeable. I really encourage people that if you want to talk to a plant-based doc, Dr. Zhu is really awesome and he can really be helpful to you. And if you guys that are watching and listening, tell us something that you're going to remember. What's your takeaway? And I also want to tell you to stay tuned for a special announcement. But in the meantime, I would like to ask Just Tass Voice, who is coming up next? Tracy Fettinger shares her incredible story of how she beat multiple sclerosis by adopting a plant-based lifestyle. Join us on Friday, April 8th, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, on Be Green with Amy Live. Well, guys, until I see you again, I wanted to also thank all of you for watching and listening because you're the reason why we're here. And I wanted to encourage you to sign off with me and Dr. Zhu because we're going to do our tagline and he's going to say the word green at the end. And mm -hmm. it's that be strong, be well, be green. Are you ready, Dr. Zhu? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Till I see you guys again, remember, be strong, be well. And be, be green. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> everyone. Now you can listen to Be Green with Amy expert interviews wherever you go. Listen while walking, meal prepping, or traveling. Find Be Green with Amy on Apple, Google, Alexa, Amazon, or virtually anywhere you find podcasts. Be strong, be well, and be green with Be Green with Amy.